Hello Fire Emblem friends! I am Glitter Valkyrie and welcome to episode 5 of Friend Showcase. In this series we look at some super creative builds from my friend list and end the showcase with a free summon or two. We have some really impressive units today and we also have a bit of a theme for the units selected. All of the units today are those who are often foddered for their skills. So let's go ahead and take a look at some units who we might not see as often due to their valuable innate skill sets. And first up today, we are going to take a look at Joan's Tail Two. Tail Two is a fantastic blade tome unit from Genealogy of the Holy War and is currently available at four and five star rarity. Since I haven't had the chance to play Genealogy, I looked up her backstory and my goodness, this girl deserves some love after what she went through. I haven't seen too many fully built tail twos, likely because she has a lot of good fodder. Not only does she come with a blade tome, but she also has the valuable drive speed at 4 star rarity. I think people often forget just how good a unit she really is and how effective she can be when she's merged up. So your tail two is merged to plus 10 and has a really impressive stat line. She's got good HP at 43, excellent attack at 54, and she is blisteringly fast with 47 speed. Since she's running a blade tome set, she will make great use of that high speed. She has a defense set of 12, so a leaf in the wind would likely knock her over, but let's be real, she is not meant to take melee damage anyway. She runs life and death really well, and desperation synergizes with the blade tome set. You kept her drive speed, which is an excellent skill, and gave her speed smoke in the seal slot. I'm pretty sure she's going to outspeed almost all of the cast of characters with this set. You have given her reciprocal aid for her assist, which will help put her in the desperation range if she needs it, and I love glimmer on units with attack stats that high. Overall, beautiful build on this tail two, and thanks for reminding us that she can be our friend and not just fodder. Excellent work. Next, we have a unit that I am personally guilty of foddering off as soon as she shows up in my barracks. And unfortunately, I'm not able to pronounce your name, but we are going to look at your plus 10, Selena. So Selena is a speedy sword unit that some may hesitate building because of her valuable assist skill reposition. She also comes with threatened speed, budget triangle adept, and an armor slaying weapon at four star rarity. So she has many good skills for inheritance. The only skill that you have kept from her base kit is reposition, and you have built her into a pretty scary unit. Selena's got really good HP at 46, a great attack stat of 50, and she is really fast with 42 speed. She's got great mixed bulk with 36 defense and 28 res. You've replaced her armor slayer and given her a Wo Dao that is refined, so that weapon also deals plus 10 damage when her special triggers. RIP that Hector who was sacrificed for distant counter, but it really just makes sense with her defense and res being as good as they are. You have sacrificed Nephany or Carla for Wrath, and that always works well with a 5 turn cooldown special like Aether. You've given her drive speed, one of the best C skills. I am so impressed with this build, and with the fact that you held yourself back from giving 11 units reposition. Great job! Now we're going to look at a plus 10 Krom from Maximus. I'm a big fan of Krom, but I am also guilty of foddering him for his very valuable special Aether. It's a very expensive skill that scores really well in Arena, but also has great utility in game modes where longevity is important, like Tempest Trials or Chain Challenges. Krom is usually the easiest way to obtain it since he appears at 3 and 4 star rarity now. However, your Krom is more than just his Aether. You have ditched his Falchion altogether for a Brave Sword, and for a slow powerhouse like Krom, it just works so well. He's got great attack of 52, and you've given him Death Blow 3 as well, so he'll be a monster player phase unit. He's got Sword Breaker as his B skill, which might make some matchups a little easier as well. He's got a great defense stat of 32 and low resistance, but Krom shouldn't be going anywhere near mages unless he's going to KO them in the player phase. He's got threatened defense in the C slot, which synergizes well with his kit. And lastly, his seal is panic ploy, and that is a great choice for Krom since his HP is 51. 
Crom may have a lot of competition from the other Sword Lords in this game, but your Crom is really special and can compete with the best of them. Thank you for sharing him with me. Next, we are going to check out the friend request list. First up, we have an unbelievable plus 10 Katria from Danau. Sorry if I butchered your name. And Katria is sometimes spotted for Luna or her weapon, which can be further refined into a slain lance. But you clearly love Katria and spent a lot of resources on her. Your Katria has great HP at 48, with an attack stat of 49 and fantastic speed of 44. She's got good mixed defenses with 29 defense and resistance. You have evolved her native killer lance into a slaying lance and refined it, which is a great choice. Her weapon also accelerates her cooldown trigger, which will be quite helpful with a two turn cooldown special like Moonbow. She's also been given quick and pulse as her seal, so her opponents better watch out or they're going to feel the wrath of Moonbow very quickly. You have given her Swift Sparrow, which is a 5-star exclusive skill, in addition to Guidance 3, which can only come from Tana, Legendary Ryoma, or Flying Olivia. I bet she is a force to be reckoned with on a mixed movement team. She's also Water Blessed, so she can get some really nice buffs depending upon who her legendary friend is. I love this build, and it's nice to see that the middle White Wing can compete with the best of the Blue Lance Flyers. Excellent work. Next, we're going to look at another Krom. This Krom belongs to Belia. I am showing off two Kroms today for a couple of reasons. First of all, I love them equally and I didn't want to choose between the two. And secondly, I wanted to show how differently a unit can be built depending upon your playstyle and preferences. So Belia's Krom is merged to plus 10 and has a couple of boosted stats due to the weapon of choice. You kept his falchion and refined it for the bomb skill, so if he's next to an ally, he'll get an additional plus four to attack, speed, defense, and resistance. It's a really nice refinement, and it works quite well with the rest of his set. That extra might from the falchion is going to give him 61 attack when he's next to an ally, and that's going to synergize so well with Heavy Blade for reducing his cooldown trigger for Aether. He has got Distant Counter, and although his resistance is low, he is going to get that boost from Falchion when he's near an ally, and that will put him at 25 res. And I think that is survivable in many cases. He is also going to laugh at Bow and Dagger units with that 38 defense. You've given him QR3, which is great for slower units in the enemy phase, and you've also given him Infantry Pulse, which is a very premium skill. Lastly, he is going to be able to function as a combat medic with Reciprocal Aid, thanks to the Renewal effect from his Falchion. This is a really well thought out build, and I just love what you've done with him. It just goes to show that a unit can play completely differently depending upon the build that you choose for them. So thank you, Belia, for sharing this crumb with me. We are also going to check out Lakia's Roy. For a long time, Roy was considered Triangle Adept fodder, but once he got his refinement, I think he's less commonly foddered now in our Dragon Heavy meta. Roy has very balanced stats that scale well with merges. He's got good HP with an attack stat of 50 and a speed of 38. He's got his signature weapon, the Binding Blade, which is super effective against dragons, but also grants him a follow-up attack in the enemy phase if his HP is 50% or greater. He also gets additional defense and resistance in the enemy phase. I forgot how many things his weapon did. Maybe I should build a Roy. <laughs> anyway, Roy is surprisingly bulky for an infantry sword unit with 29 defense and 32 resistance. Of course, he is an excellent user of distant counter and you've indeed sacrificed a Hector for him. He's got Sword Breaker, a Dual Spur, and a Dual Rally. He's also got Aether as his special, so he's going to score really, really well in Arena. I love this build, and Roy is clearly your boy, and you've definitely done a good job with him. Thank you for sharing. And we have to say hi to Valkyrie Fan along the way. I don't know if this is directed at me or if you happen to enjoy one of the best Fire Emblem classes, but either way, hello, 
and thank you for the request. And I hope you're having fun with your brave Veronica. And last but certainly not least, it'll take me a second to find you. We are going to take a look at Jolie Poli with Bride Ninian. You might be thinking, why would anyone fodder Bride Ninian? And I agree, she is too precious to be sacrificed. But she's also currently the only source of chill attack, and I have run into a fair amount of units in Arena that do not come with chill attack naturally. So rather than giving your other units her premium B skill, you have merged our favorite Bride to plus nine. She's got an excellent attack stat of 50 and is incredibly fast with 42 speed. She's got low defense, which is fine because she shouldn't be tanking any melee hits anyway. You've also sacrificed Summer Camilla for her weapon, Juicy Wave Plus, and it is refined for speed. This weapon also has built-in desperation and synergizes so well with Fury in the A slot. And because it has that built-in desperation, you can keep her B skill, which is just fantastic, and you've given her Moonbow for a special. She is also playing a support role on your team with attack and res tactic. This Ninian can do it all. She'll be a really competent attacker, but she'll also provide support with her buffs and dancing ability. Thank you for sharing this fantastic Ninian, and I hope that your final copy comes home when she returns on a banner so that she can be plus 10 like she deserves. And with that, we are going to redeem our free summon on the Heroes with Fury banner. These are all really good units and I'd be happy with any of them. And that one green is calling me, so we'll pull that one. Well, I guess it was Raven calling me today. <laughs> So that will do it for our fifth edition of Friend Showcase. If you want to be featured in an upcoming episode, I'll leave my ID in the description. I am thinking about a Sacred Stones theme for my next one, but if you have a unit that you love, feel free to send it to me. It's so much fun to see how many different ways a unit can be built. I am always amazed by everyone's creativity and devotion to their favorite characters. In terms of what's coming up, I am undecided about pulling on the new genealogy banner. I'm having some regrets about not trying to pull Lean on the legendary banner and Sylvia looks really cool. I am also wary that she's going to get the Lean treatment and remain 5 star locked just because she's a dancer. So I'm pondering. And this is not Fire Emblem Heroes related, but I may try my hand at Dragalia Lost when it launches because it's Nintendo and if their name is on it, I have to try it. So. Keep an eye out for those things in the future. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. As always, thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.